Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video we're going to ask the question, is computer engineering worth it? So let's get started. As we all know, computer engineering is a relatively new field, um, newer than electrical engineering or computer science. A lot of people may ask the question, okay, well, uh, this is a new field. I don't really know what it's all about, what it entails. Um, how much do you get paid as a computer engineer? And what degree I need to have? Do I need to have a bachelor's or do I need to go for my PhD? Or can I just stick with a uh, with an associate? So there's a lot of questions about that and at the end of the day you end up asking, well, is it even worth getting a degree in computer engineering? So that's what I'm going to explain in this video and if you end up finding this information useful or helpful, then please drop a comment down below and um, as always subscribe if you would like to see more videos. So the very first thing before I actually answer whether or not computer engineering is a good degree, I'd like to go over this calculation called the pay over tuition. And this calculation was created by Christy Shen, who was the author of Quit Like a Millionaire. And the idea behind this calculation is when choosing a major in a job, you have to figure out how much that particular field pays you over the minimum wage and then divide that by your tuition. This will tell you whether that degree is worth it financially. So the higher the number, the better the degree and the more it's worth it financially. For example, when I was in high school, I was actually interested in two or three other categories besides computer engineering. The other three that I was thinking and considering about majoring in were psychology, um, nutrition, and accounting. So these were the other three. I was like, okay, well, I like, I kind of like math and I don't mind doing the, the problems and the numbers, so maybe accounting. And I was like, well, I really like psychology. I had taken multiple courses um, as a high school student. And the last one was nutrition because I was uh, really into health and fitness and I still am. I just am passionate about that area as well. Um, so those were the other three. Now I'm going to break it down in terms of the, you know, pay over tuition score of each of these degrees to kind of show you how the computer engineering degree is the best one I could have chosen because it had the higher POT score and the higher the score, the better. Just want to establish this. The minimum wage in the state that I live in is $21,840. So we'll just keep that in mind. Um, but with this number, we will be able to subtract it from the average wage of each of the different degrees. That way we'll be able to quickly calculate the average salary above the minimum wage. So the very first one is accounting. Now the average salary of accounting in the state that I live in particular is $48,538. So when you subtract this from the minimum wage in the state that I live in, um, I get $26,698. Now I'm going to put this value aside for a second and then I'm going to calculate how much it would theoretically cost me to go to school at the state that I live in. So I would probably need a bachelor's degree, so I'd only need to go for four years. And since I live in state, I would be considered an in-state resident. So with all of this being said, the total cost of tuition would be $31,500 to get my bachelor's degree in accounting. So now I have these two values. I have the 26,698 and then the $31,500. And I'm going to divide the 26,698 by the $31,500 and I end up with a POT score of 0.85. So the next one is nutrition. And the average salary at the state that I live in is $58,875. And I end up with a salary above minimum wage of $37,035. I would only need my bachelor's degree, so that would cost $31,500, and I end up with a total POT score of 1.17. Now you can see it's a slightly higher than the accounting, but it's still not the best, as you'll see later on. Now the next degree is psychology, and the average salary for a psychologist is $111,329, and I end up with a total value of $89,489. Now with this number, um, I'm going to set that aside, and I'm going to calculate the tuition. With psychology, I found out that the uh, average in-state tuition for an undergraduate student is slightly lower than that of the standard bachelor's degree in accounting and in nutrition, but we all know that psychology you'd most likely go for your PhD to become a psychologist. So in-state undergraduate tuition per year is $7,413 and then the graduate 
in-state tuition is $10,477. So once I get those values, I'm gonna add them together and then that's my total tuition to get my PhD in psychology and that ends up being $71,560. Now when I divide the $89,000 by the $71,000, I end up with a POT score of 1.25. This value is a little bit higher again than the previous two, but I'm also going for an extra four years. I'm not just getting my bachelor's, I'm going for my PhD. So just something to keep in mind when you actually do these calculations, look to see how many years you're actually going to school to get that degree. So of course, last but not least is computer engineering. So the average salary at the state that I live in for a computer engineer is $81,651. When you subtract that from the minimum wage, I end up with a salary above minimum wage of $59,811. Now the tuition is going to be the same at $31,500. When I divide that number by the 59,811, I get a POT score of 1.90. So as you can see, this is the highest POT score of all the other ones that I had gone through and mentioned and was considering a majoring in. I wonder why. But the other thing is that I'm only going for four years. I'm only getting my bachelor's degrees. However, this is just a theoretical calculation on if I were to start working with a bachelor's degree. My real POT score is actually higher than that because I went for my master's, I went an extra year, and I got a higher paying salary when I started. So. I'm going to do the real POT that I had for the computer engineering degree. I had a total salary above minimum wage of $82,610. And then tuition, because I went an extra year to get my master's degree, I was in a program so I only had to go one more year. Um, that was about $8,000, about $4,000 a semester. So I tacked on you know, an extra $8,000 to the $31,500 and I ended up with $39,500. I divided the $82,100 by this 39,500 and I ended up with a POT score 2.08. So as you can see, I had a higher POT score uh, in reality than in the calculation. You can just see here that um, accounting was probably the worst and then um, yes, psychology was better than the other two, than nutrition and accounting, but you go for eight years, that's a long time. I think you'd have to just be really, really passionate about the topic and the subject uh, to get a PhD in that area. Based on this tool, computer engineering is definitely worth it and it's definitely worth getting a degree in. So that is just one tool. You can always use this POT calculation and you know, compare it to other degrees that you're thinking about majoring in and see which one is the highest and how many years you'll be going to school for. Other reasons as to why it's worth majoring in computer engineering is because you only need your bachelor's degree to get a relatively good paying job, um, above average salary job. So above 50, 60K, you'll only need your bachelor's for that in computer engineering, which is really nice. You only need to go to school for four years. The other thing is that because this degree or because this field is very specific and it can be intense sometimes, there's a lot of math involved, um, a lot of computations, a lot of calculating and problem solving, um, it really discourages a lot of other people and it's hard to do. Like I'm not downplaying the difficulty of majoring in this field. Um, it is a difficult, difficult field to major in, um, but that is another reason why you should because not a lot of people are going to major in it. And because of that, there's going to be little competition. And when there's little competition, well, you know, employers are gonna pick you up because you're one of the few who actually majored in that area and they, they need you to do the job that they uh, requested. So they're much more likely to hire you and give you a higher paying salary because you're, you're in demand. There's not a lot of supply and there's higher demand because of that. And that leads me to my next one. So because the engineering field can be very rigorous and difficult and there's low competition, employers are looking for those who are very specialized in a certain area in engineering. So specialized in hardware engineering or specialized in software engineering. They really want someone who is specialized in those areas and when they find someone, which is you know not very often or common, um, they're that much likely to pay you a higher salary because of that. They can't easily replace you if they wanted to. The only downside about it is that it is very rigorous, especially the classes. They can be very, very intense. But if you push through it and you're able to do all that, then um, you're good to go. So those are all the reasons and factors as to why computer engineering is worth it and why you should major in computer engineering if you're undecided on whether or not you should major in that. 
Um, and yeah, I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you found it useful and helpful. And if you did, then please let me know and like and share if you think someone else will find this useful. And if you would like to see more videos, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.